thing. <laughs> All right, hi again for those who have just joined. <laughs> um, when we get into research in the beginning, um, we usually do so as uh, students or as PhD candidates. And we start our journey in research with the intention to generate new knowledge for the world, right? So we don't go into research because we want to increase our age index or we want to think about impact factors. We go into research because we want to be part of scientific progress. But then um, the more we learn about research, the more we think about research quality and what it means and how it works. So at some point we will see things that don't work as well as we would hope. Um, we see magazine articles that say how science goes wrong. We see reproducibility study after reproducibility study that says a lot of the work that we do is not as good as we want. Um, same with replication studies. So this is actually something that made me as a young researcher very sad. And I wondered, is there anything that we could do about it? So the way I had imagined research was this big idea of standing on the shoulders of giants, right? So there's great thinkers out there, these great researchers, and we build on, on each other's work. And one day I will be part of this big shoulder that other people can stand upon and um, people can build upon my work at some point. But sometimes, and this is maybe also a little over exaggerated, but sometimes it feels a little bit like we're standing on a pile of waste, especially in some fields. And that's not a great feeling. And I think open science can be part of the solution. So, but let's take a step back and think about why is it actually so hard? And I think there's two main reasons. Um, the first reason is that research nowadays is quite complex. I'm a data scientist by background and my part of the research process is actually, I think one of the simplest parts, right? So I get the data, I do the data analysis, I create some nice figures and tables and then maybe a paper, um, but I do everything on the computer, right? And even that part, um, thinking of computational reproducibility, for example, even that part is already so, so complex. The pipeline, even that pipeline that I drew here is um, not complex enough for what it actually looks like in, in the real world, right? But if that is the simple part, then all the data collection, people going out in the field, people working with patients, people working in a lab, um, all these things, they're much, much harder and much, much harder to document as well, right? Because code is something that I can read and I can understand, but writing documentation for what we actually do out there in the real world <laughs> with, with our study subjects is really, really hard. But I think doing the hard work of, work of documenting things and understanding the research process of others um, beyond the paper. And the other part why I think this is so hard is, well, research involves people <laughs> and people make mistakes and we all make mistakes. Um, also, research projects are, since they're getting more complex, they, we're involved in more complex team structures or we're involved in not such a complex team structure, but um, we're involved in a complex power structure that also might not be very conducive to doing good work. And I know that um, because a lot of people talk to me about their supervisors, um, because that's part of my work is also understanding the fears and needs of people. And a lot of times it's just really not good. And open science also to me means team science, means collaboration, means um, community building. So that is also part of open science to me and why I think open science can be part of the solution. Now, um, I said open science helps with uh, rigor, but I also think open science can help with equity. And I wanna talk a little bit about that as well. 
And um, I'm picking up a lot of these words that were listed actually in the previous year's um, title. So I like that. So here's the ivory tower word. <laughs> um, speaking of the ivory tower, um, why, why do people perceive science and research as an ivory tower? And I think there's many reasons for that. Part of it is our language. We speak in a way that normal people <laughs> don't really understand. Um, and that's okay to a certain extent, um, but there can be better communication to the outside world. We're locking up our data, we're locking up our code, we're locking up our papers. And open science is the opposite of that, um, including things like science communication and citizen science. Now, one part how science and open science can help create more equity is by seeing science not as a commodity, as something where we pay fees, um, but as a global public good, something that's open to everyone, that's accessible for everyone. And part of that is also, um, part of why that, in my opinion, needs to be is because most of our research is done, at least here in Germany, based on public funding. So that means I, as a taxpayer, pay part of your salary in some way, <laughs> right? And so I, as the taxpayer, should have access to your work in some way as well, right? It doesn't make sense to me that researchers are allowed to keep everything to themselves and say, this is my work, if I'm paying part of their salary and if we all together collectively pay part of their salary. Now, I also wanna talk not only about equity between people, but also equity between research outputs, because that's something that's also very near and dear to my heart. At the moment, the paper is the star of the show. Um, the paper is all that matters, but I think, um, and that's, again, from the perspective of a data scientist, to me, the data and the code are actually more important because they tell more of the story of what actually happened. So sometimes I actually go read the code of, of people um, rather than the paper, because for me, that tells me more about what they actually did. So I think um, data and code should really be first-class citizens in science. And I'm not saying... Um, that I don't understand why we nowadays do data papers and software papers. But I think software and data should be a star in of themselves rather than, yeah, rather than second class citizens. And while I'm already talking about <laughs> research outputs, I also don't think that we should build our careers on small p values anymore. That's just um, on a side note. <laughs> When we talk about equity through open science, we need to also take a quick look at how open science can also be a challenge, um, how producing and using open science is, um, is a problem in of itself sometimes. Um, First of all, I want to mention incentives and rewards, and that's an, another thing that happened, uh, was also mentioned in one of the previous uh, talks already. Um, the incentives and rewards are currently not set up for us to be, yeah, to have a career through doing open science, right? Um, this is changing, of course, um, but it's still, yeah, it's still not where I would like to see it. Time and money, um, resources are spread in equally. And so not everybody has the time and money to spend three or four months in preparing an open data set. Um, compute resources is becoming more and more of an issue as well. So even if data sets are available, um, when we think about big computational models, right, AI, um, not everybody has the compute resources to actually do something with the data. And that's something that we need to think about as well. Even if things are open, not everybody can work with the open data. Um, volunteerism is something that's very important to me because that's something that I personally struggle with a little bit. Um, 
a lot of the work that we do in open science and that I have done in open science has been volunteer work. Um, but not everybody has the ability to spend their time or their free time um, on these things. So I, I think this is also something to keep in mind when we think about volunteer work. Um, privacy, I listed here because we also need to think about the equity of people that we research. So not everything should be open. And finally, ability is obviously something that I care about a lot. That's why I do training. Um, not everybody has the skills to op do open science. Open science is really, really hard. And we need to be mindful of that and actually help people take their hand um, and meet them where they're at. Because if we just say do open science, then this is it's just not possible. It's too hard. So how can we improve the quality of research? How can we improve equity in research? I think uh, the answer is open science. I think we can do it together, that open science is an answer. Um, even if sometimes it can create inequities by itself as well. Um, as a pragmatic open scientist, I also <laughs> want to finish with uh, some thoughts that are important to me as well um, to, to leave with you with. Um, I think pragmatic open science is the way to go. So let's not be try to be perfect from the beginning. Uh, let's try to be as open as possible, but as close as necessary. So sometimes openness is not the right way, um, but many times it is. So as open as possible, as close as necessary is one of the things that I always try to follow. Then um, don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good, um, both for yourself and for others. So try to build a community that's understanding that not everybody is as open as you, um, maybe, or as rigorous as you yet, um, but help them get there. Um, but also don't try to be perfect from the beginning. Open science, as I said, it's hard. It's hard and it's a step-by-step -step process. And that leads me to my last point that I want to make is make every project better than the last. Um, this way you'll get better and better over time. That's how I did it. And that's how in the end open science became my career. Um, and that's how, yeah, I managed to get to a standard that I feel comfortable with over time. I'm not comfortable with the standard of my first research project. I think that's also fair to say. <laughs> All right, let me finish up um, with how I started. I think, and that's my personal definition, and it may differ for you all, um, but to me, open science is not an end in itself, but a means to achieve equity in research and research quality. Um, and thanks, everyone, for letting me give this talk.